Hello and welcome. Now, today I have got a Gary with me from Storm Juice. Is that right? Oh, and he's he's got a cuppa there. Oh, hey. A cup of coffee. I'm going to need this. Well, I've got me um, cup of tea. Look at that. Best ever grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Best ever grumpy grandfather. Grumpy. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Gary, we've known each other for a couple of years now, haven't we? Yeah. You've got a few things to discuss? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I suppose we both went and watched what? Probably the worst word for that. We both witnessed the uh, Cybertruck unveiling in Perth yes. the other day. Yes, um, and there was another was... do last night as well, wasn't there? Which I didn't go. Yeah, I went, yeah, I went to that. Pretty much the, it was the same thing, except they had it in a different room, the main show room. And uh, they included showing us how the doors open. <laughs> oh, um, what we do? Push the button. I know, right? Uh, the tonneaus, uh, the tonneau cover, and the, the light show and the, the frunk and all that kind of stuff. Still didn't get to sit in it or touch it or even breathe on it. You know, um, the thing is definitely a fingerprint magnet, but I don't care. I still want one. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, I sat in it in New York and, um, and got to play with it and the boot and the. Um, the frunk and sat in it and played around. Um, Did you stroke it? Sorry? Did you stroke it? No. <laughs> I'll be the stroke man. I'll be grinding on the damn thing. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, I, I always wanted one after seeing it when it was first released and my wife says, no, it's ugly. Um, and she still says, it's ugly, you're not having one. And having actually sat in it and looked at it, I'm not all that interested in having one anymore. Is that terrible? Right. Why is that? Tell me. Um, I, it's just something about it now. I, I mean, I used to have utes, as we call them here, pickup trucks for the Americans, uh -huh. but um, never really had a huge need for them. I think the only need to have a Cybertruck would be to tow a big caravan. And go around Australia with it. Don't need a caravan, just sleep in the back. Like no, nah, not in not in the cyber truck. I mean, unless you've got the, the tent thing that you could put on it. Yeah, why not? Just chip in a caravan a bit. Yeah, no, I, I like my creature comforts, I'm sorry. <laughs> you think there'd be enough room in the back of a cyber truck with a tent for you to body slide me or not? Look, will you stop going there, Gaz? <laughs> Oh dear, you're a naughty boy. I try. Yes, don't we all? Um, so yeah, look, Cybertruck. Nah, not for me. Um, so, but you still want one, which is fine. Look, everybody's to their yeah. own. Oh, I, I love the design. I, I love those freak. You know me. I've got an aura. I like cars that are a bit, bit more personality and a bit more out there than your standard design for MG4, Dolphin, Tesla. Well, you've got an aura, haven't mm. you? Or a cat. Yeah. Uh, have you got a yeah. Tesla as well? A what, sir? Have you got a Tesla as well? And my partner has a Tesla Model Y, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the aura cat is a bit of a little funky thing, and um, it's it's okay. quite okay. Better than okay. What's that, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, you can buy that for about 35 grand in WA on the road. 32 and a half after you get your... Uh, but you get your three, three and a half thousand dollar rebate. Now, there's not too many of those left. Uh, uh, I don't know how many of them left. I know Queensland, they literally just shut it off. I was about to say, Queensland had six thousand dollars off, which would have brought that price down to... 29,000, um, which would be yeah. brilliant, but they've gone and ceased it literally in the last few days. Yep, so, yep, they reached their cap after two years, and it was yeah. supposed to be they were hoping for like more years, but obviously, they've had, I suppose it's good and bad. They've had a pretty good uptake in EVs in Queensland, not surprised considering their rebate, but um, yeah, disappointing in the fact that it only lasted just, just two years. Um, yeah. How, how long's the WA through. rebate been going? Which is three and a half thousand, and they were going to allow ten thousand rebates, I think. 
Yeah, 10,000, and I think it's lasted so far probably at least two years, more than two years at yeah. the moment. So I, don't I think it's be left. Been going longer than um, Queensland, that's for sure. So, mm. yeah, with the, I mean, a 6,000 rebate, very nice. Yeah, um, I think some people, were, depending on your wage, what, what you're earning, some people were getting 3,000 rebate. If you earn too much above, I think it's $185,000 a year, I think you only get the 3,000 rebate. But anyone, anyone else below that got the $6,000. Well, and $80,000 Aussie dollars a year is pretty reasonable income. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right. I do so, massage, for, and I don't get that much money for doing massage. In fact, people pay me to stop doing massage. So. <laughs> uh, you're incorrigible, guys. Incorrigible. My middle name. Um, but uh, on, back on the aura, just quickly. I mean, can I just say how brilliant the aura is and for the long range don't even bother with the standard range which is what i've got um because now that's only a thousand dollars less than, i was about to say um, that than, it's a thousand dollars difference now isn't it on the price yeah so don't even don't even bother with the short range um get the get paid the thousand bucks and get the extra 100ks of range because apart from that they're exactly the same car all exactly the same features which has got everything is the um, battery it, different yeah, the NMC battery in the uh, the long range, um, LFP in the short range. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's, I know that's, some, that's people, yeah, some people just want to have an LFP battery. I am sort of prefer an LFP battery to an NMC one myself. Um, so do I. A thousand bucks, I don't care. It's, uh, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, that's it's, a, um, takes it from 300 and something Ks to 400 and something K range, doesn't it? Yeah, WLTP three hundred for the short range, four twenty for the long range, and it's actually actually surprisingly close to the WLTP range when the, when I've been doing mixed driving. I was I was thinking normally you take twenty percent off the WLTP, but my aura I regularly get you know say two ninety two ninety five, so that's very close to what they they said it would be. Normally it's lies, damn lies and statistics. Yes, but uh, yes, in this case it's not so. too bad. Yeah, all, all manufacturers lie. I was talking to my friend about this this morning because he's actually spending big on a, a BMW. Anyway, uh, anyway, so and not a if you're watching, not a big pet. mistake. Yes, yes, not petrol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hundred yeah. grand, hundred grand for a petrol BMW. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> um, he'll come around one day. He'll come around to the electric way of life one day. But he lives in an apartment, so it's a bit more difficult for him, to be fair. But he did most so I was still going to train. But, um, yeah, all manufacturers lie about, you know, kilometres per litre and also, you know, uh, kilometres. Yeah. It's because the cost. government's got their WLTP standard, which is all done in a laboratory environment. So um, yeah, you're never going driver. to get Yeah, perfect driver, perfect track beautiful weather conditions, the right speeds, you know, not too much on the acceleration because that's where they lose it. So, yeah, they, they do the best they can to make the, the figures look as good as they can, which is just yeah. marketing. I mean, but, yeah, Tesla, Tesla does the same. I mean, you know, you yeah. get your standard range and it says around the 500K. Well, you're never going to get that. Um, you'll be lucky to get 420 or 430 out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone looking at a small car um, between the MG4, the Dolphin and the Aura, test drive them all. But look at the um, service costs as well, because the MG4, and this is why MG probably don't like me too much. Sorry, MG. But I had to be honest. The service costs of the MG in Australia are just ridiculous. Yes. Um, $99 a year for the Aura. Um, and I think the BYDs are somewhere in between the Aura and the MG kind of service costs. Um, but, yeah, the Aura, for me, the Aura is honestly the best value I, I think it's an excellent car i sat in one i haven't been able to oh no i did get to test drive one in sydney um and that was the base model standard range and you know what mm. it was bloody good the materials are great and they are surprised yeah, yeah and i mean for someone mm. like me with the bad arthritis in the spine getting in and out of saloon yeah. i can't but i could get in and out of that it's yeah, that's why I didn't buy a Model the 3. Doorway and um, the height of the doorway. Um, yeah, the seats it and out. Yeah. yeah, that's why I didn't buy a Model 3, because I, I was going to go a Tesla, but the Model 3 was the only one I was thinking of at the time. There's no point having two Model Ys in the garage. Um, 
but I didn't get it Model 3 because it's just a bit too low for me. I've got a motorbike accident, so I'm back. So it was, I knew I was just going to do my back in after a while, getting in and out of such a low kind of a car. So, yeah, the Aura is the right kind of height for me. And the Y, of course, that's a bit yeah. all right. Yeah, I mean, that's why I moved from the 3 to the Y. But, um, no, I quite like the Aura. I think it's an excellent car. Um, I did drive an MG4, but I didn't think it was as good as the Aura, to be truthful. I've got, a, I did review the MG4. I don't know if you've seen it on my channel. Storm Juice, by the way. You get, go and see <laughs> his channel, Storm Juice. <laughs> um, but I, I love the drive of the MG4. The MG4 drives better than the Aura, in my opinion. Like it's, it's like a, I think I described it as scale electric. It's, it's like a, it's like a little tiny scale electric car. You know, it's just amazing. Uh, it's really got really good balance. Um, brilliant one pedal driving. Um, just great as a driving car is brilliant but then i think they stuffed up on the infotainment lack of features like it doesn't have any you know, a lot of safety features for the base model um you have to spend a fortune just to get the same features you get standard in the aura and the door i was going to say if you get the standard aura um to get the same features you need to go up to the middle range mg uh actually more than the middle range mg you've got to get the um i nearly said ecstasy there but it's not called ecstasy what's it called essence yeah, essence. essence that's the one yeah <laughs> So, so you've, you've got to cost. spend another five, six, seven thousand dollars on top to get the same sort of uh, bits and bobs inside. Uh, I think it's about ten grand. You have to spend ten grand just to oh, get the same features much? that you get in the base dolphin and the base aura. But um, I don't, uh, I don't generally think the base dolphin is as good value because with with that one you get all the great features that you get in the aura um, that you don't get in the MG. But it's got that motor that is. Um, quite weak. I think it's a 50 kilowatt motor, yeah. um, which is um, slightly slightly faster than a Toyota Corolla, I think. Um, but the others, the MG4 and the Aura, have got, I think, 126 watt motor in them. So mm. there's, it's, it's sedate. The Dolphin is sedate. Plus, um, I've got a good, I actually got a video coming out soon, if I ever get off my finished editing it. Um, you see, you're really good. You just you're everywhere all over the world and you're still putting videos out. That's crazy. I don't wish I could do that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I did have a person I'd ever met before, a guy called Peter. Um, he he wanted to basically get a small EV and he lives in Windowie in WA. It's about an hour and a half drive away from uh, Perth. And um, I said, look, let's, let's sort out um, a day where we go and, test each of these cars and so I organized it for him to test the mg4 the aura and the dolphin and i've never actually been in a dolphin before i was, I was quite impressed um, overall actually it's um you know i've always liked it apart from the motor and anyway I, I won't spoil it but basically he went and tested all these cars and then he ordered a car which uh, all will be revealed in the video sorry for teasing you <laughs> like we're gonna have to wait for the video to come out are yeah. we or you find out what he chose. I had no influence over what he chose. You know, literally just let him drive the cars and then I've got his, his opinions, the good and the bad of each. So, um, yeah, oh. that, that was, a, was an interesting exercise, just taking someone fresh around to while, check these cars out. While we're on the subject of BYD, um, BYD are bringing out their ute into Australia, um, the Shark, which is actually a hybrid but yeah, they have so, so. just announced the price. Well, I don't know whether it's been announced, but um, it's been leaked. Um, mm. And uh, they're looking at um, the base model being 68000 Australian dollars plus on roads, uh, mm. which is 77300 drive away in Sydney Metro. Uh, in WA, that's a few thousand dollars more. Um but, uh, you know, that's actually not too bad a price. They say it's um, uh, on a par with um, a Ford Ranger, mid-grade, um, and so on, a Toyota Hilux Rogue. Rogue. Um, so it's all Rouge. about the same sort of price, which is, I think, a lot better than the um, LDV uh, truck. Which is so this is a hybrid, is it? This is a hybrid. They are going to be bringing out a full battery electric version of it. Um, 
but that won't be here until next year, I don't think. But this has got a 1.5 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol um, and two electric motors. Um, so, yeah, look, I mean, it looks okay. Well, what's the battery size on that? Sorry. Uh, it's oh, actually okay. got quite a reasonable battery size 29.6 kilowatt hours. Um, and so a 5.7 yeah. to 100 uh, mm. time isn't too bad for a big ute. Damn, um, it's faster than Aurora. Yeah. Um, now, true. it's supposed to get about 100 kilometres electric only driving range, which is actually a lot more reasonable. When you look at a lot of these um, other plug in hybrids like the Mitsubishi Outlander, that will get maybe 50 or 60 kilometres. Um, the one I had you know, six, seven years ago would only do about 40 kilometres. They have increased the battery pack size from 11 to 16 or so um, kilowatt hours. But this with an almost 30 kilowatt hour battery pack on board um, isn't too bad, I don't think. Well, and if it will do, even if it only do 80 kilometers, that's still pretty reasonable before the petrol will kick in. But I, I'd want to wait for the full battery electric version to uh, to come out next year. I'm actually quite surprised that it's only 100 k's of range off the battery there. It's a 30 kilowatt hour battery, let's say 26 usable. That's not too far different from um, a Nissan Leaf AZ E0 from, say, 2016. Yeah, you've got to remember it's a big, heavy truck. Yeah. I, I must have, I thought it would at least get 150, but yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, 100, 100 k. Most people don't do more than 100 k in a day anyway. So, but I don't know how many people, how much they do in use. Obviously, tradies will have it. And so they probably well, don't. Well, I was about to more. say, I mean, the, the average drive in Australia a day is about what? 40 or 50 k, 40 kilometres a day. But for utes, it's going to be a tradie that would have it and mm. um, they would do a bit more. I would expect rather than, unless they just go to work with their tools in the tray and do their work and then drive home, then they'll be hitting the average 40 or 50 kilometres a day. But, mm. you know, I mean, that that's a better price than I was anticipating. Um yeah, especially I mean, after I, especially after I got a phone call yesterday from VW because I I sent them a message saying I'm interested in your ID Buzz, and I got mm. a phone call yesterday regarding um, the ID Buzz and you know am I still interested? And I go yeah I used to drive a combi back in the sixties, um, mm. so the ID Buzz. I've shown you age there, right? <laughs> yeah, so. <clears throat> um, so uh, while I was in, would you believe, Reykjavik in Iceland last week, um, I well, got... Wait, sorry, sorry, Nigel, what museum did you go to in Iceland? Um, a VW <laughs> dealership. <laughs> and um, <Another> museum. <laughs> they, they had um, the uh, VW Buzz base model there. Now, over there, it was the equivalent of about $90,000. Now, that is, they're much more expensive in Iceland. Um, that would be, everything's more expensive in, in the, the Nordic countries. Um, so that would be maybe $70,000, $75,000 equivalent in Australia. But I spoke to the VW guy yesterday and I go, so... Look, the base model, I really like it. I've actually sat in one. So what's the expected price in Australia? And he goes, oh, it'll be upwards of 100000 plus. And I just go, you have got to be fucking ridiculous. I mean, that is just a stupid price for a base model VW. That's the base. That's the base model. Damn. Which has got a range that is on a par with your aura no way what 420 yeah. k's for a long no 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 300 300 <laughs> you're kidding me ah oh, geez no no, it's, it's... no the the base model has got a 66 kilowatt hour battery in and will do 300 k's um you go up a few models and you get up to i think it's an 88 or 91 kilowatt hour battery and you'll get 400 Ks. Um, 
But I still don't think that that's, that's good enough. And not for the price. Yeah, no, no, that's, I'll say that's a bit of a joke. That's like when they brought out the first electric mini and you're like you're spending, what, 65K on an electric mini or something like that and you're getting, you know, 200 and something K range. That like sounds only 250 kilometres range, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, not really, not very good value for money. Um, I was just looking on the Driven, sorry. So for that, I know they had an article on the Combi. Um, cause I, or the buzz, sorry. Um, but, um, cause I, I really love it. I mean, I'm not so sure about the new design since they brought out the design since the concept. So the concept that they brought out, that looked more like the original combi kind of vibe. Um, I love that much more. And then they brought out the new one, the production model, which pretty much just looks like a van, you know, it's like a, mm. just a, a cargo van that they decided, oh, they'll also put some seats in there to make it look like a, you know, some kind of people transport or something. Um, but still, still love it, even if it does look more like a commercial van. Yeah, no, I mean, they do have a commercial van, which has got no seats in the back, um, and they've got a seven-seat version, um, which is an extended length one. Um, mm. Yeah, Imagine look, when, when I first saw it announced a few years ago, I go, oh, love it, love it. And then 100,000 Australian dollars, sorry. No, nah. no. Hey, well, a cyber truck could probably cost the same or less. So yes, it eventually gets here. Get, get, get a cyber truck instead, <laughs> and roll over those those V dubs. <laughs> It'll be gone. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> VW is going downhill. I reckon. Um, yeah, the ID three and the ID four are also overpriced. Um, they're closing. Oh. They're threatening to close some plants some factories in germany and uh, china and well they they're in league with xpeng in china yeah and they're shutting down their stuff in china at least for the vw side of things because yes they're really yeah, but they're going they're using the xpeng now we've got the g6 just been released here and i'm still awaiting the price in Australia on the Xpeng G6, which is a very, very nice car. Um, and VW are in um, cahoots with uh, Xpeng in China, and they're using the G9, which is an even bigger one, um, mm. to the, the base of that, the platform, to build a, a car in China. Um, but... The G9 in China, uh, they're taking to Europe and it's going to cost over 60,000 euros, which is $100,000. Yeah. All these, these EVs, they're just getting ridiculous prices. So, I suppose we're getting cheaper because lithium prices have dropped yeah. through the floor. Uh, and there prices is... Um, uh, Vauxhall in England. Have you heard of them? <laughs> Bloody GM. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've actually just brought out a car that has got price parity, um, electric to petrol. It's the Frontier, which is that car there. Yeah, um, yeah I remember the Frontier. Yeah. It looks not too bad. Pretty boring, but it's all right. Yeah, look, they have now gone nice and put out the electric car, the same price as the petrol, 23,495 British pounds, which is, well, I suppose that's about 45,000 um, Aussie dollars. Uh, but brilliant. it's the okay. same price, whether you get the electric or the petrol. So yeah, um, that is the way them. things should go. We need price yeah, parity. Although I will say in, in Australia, the, the GWM Aura, um, the long range, 37K um, or 32 and a half after the rebate. But even at 37K, it's still cheaper than a hybrid Toyota Corolla because that's 37 and a half K over here. Yes. Yeah. So we actually have gone below price parity with at least one car here to yeah, something so it, that It would be like Toyota providing the Corolla and the Corolla battery version. Um, for the yeah. same price. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the oh, Aura right. and um, so on, being cheaper than the Corolla Hybrid is yeah. 
yeah, we should be going that way, but um, it's never going to happen, is it? It will. It just takes time. I, mean, I did read um, that EV adoption in the US, I don't know if you go on Facebook or wherever, but um, there's a lot of haters on there. There's like, you know, it's like troll farms, like, you know, fires, EV fires. I have a video on that. Um, but also, you know, EVs are rubbish generally, blah, blah, blah. And the sales are tanking. I hear that a lot. And yeah, sales are tanking, but only for the legacy automakers because they don't know how to make a decent legacy, uh, sorry, a decent EV at any kind of, you know, even sub-profit. You know, they're losing so much money on every EV they make. That's why they're kind of backing off a bit and trying to push hybrids and, well, mainly hybrids again. But um, the report I read um, recently said that um, they were expecting 13% of EV sales um, this last year in, in America, and it was actually just 9%. There's still a 9% increase on the year before. So EV sales aren't, aren't tanking. It's just that um, some of those sales have been converted into hybrids because those legacy companies, Ford, GM, yeah, they're, uh, they're, 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 not, they're not able to actually make a decent electric car for a decent price that people are wanting to buy. And that even at the prices they are, they're losing, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars per car. Ford are losing thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars per vehicle. And the problem as I is, see it is <clears throat> that they're not ramping up production to make it more efficient. They're making a few thousand cars and then selling them and making a loss and going, oh, we can't maintain this. So there mm. must be a problem that people don't want to buy them. And that's what's happening. People are then picking yeah. up on yeah. this. Um, oh, sales are tanking. It's only because they've decided to make fewer and fewer and fewer EVs. So there's mm. fewer out there to be sold. Um, and, and they're just the ramping it up. I mean, you've got to look at what happened with Tesla in the early stages. It was making a loss until, well, it was, wasn't all that many years ago. Um, mm. And then they um, started to um, uh, make, uh, make a profit. Yeah. Now they make a profit on every car. Yeah, and I've been doing so for a while. That's why they can afford to build new factories to then increase. But um, yeah, so for anyone that says EV sales are tanking, no, they're not tanking for companies that know how to build them. And they're definitely the sales of EVs are still going up. They have slowed a bit um, because those other companies just don't know how to do it properly. And they're also the stopping competition in, in America for Chinese cars who also know how to build them properly. Although I think they are making them at a loss. I think I'm pretty sure the Chinese are making their EVs at a bit of a loss. I can't see how they make any money out of a 27K or, or even a 40K um, MG4, to be honest. But they're selling some of them at $17,000 um, American equivalent. I mean, it is it is ludicrous. But in over in China, a lot of them are state-owned or state-subsidised, which is why... China, um, Canada, and America wanted, and Europe wanted to put um, tariffs on them because they say it's unfair competition. It's state subsidised, and I'm sure a lot of uh, those uh, cars are subsidised by the state. Yeah, but overall, EV sales are still going up. Um, my God, Norway, leaders of the world. I think they had like what was it, ninety three percent, ninety three percent, I think, of new cars last month were electric it's crazy it's and amazing. and 0.1 percent were diesel <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one of that. hey did you hear about the perth ev buses is getting it back closer to home what um, uh so basically uh they're putting uh enough charging equipment to capable of charging 90 buses overnight at the perth malaga um depot Oh really? Yeah. So it's I actually a massive bought any electric buses because they. I know some years ago when I had a word with the um, state minister, he said, "Oh, we're, we're getting two electric buses for a trial." And I go, "Have you ever actually thought of contacting the people in Shen, Shenzhen in China who put thirty thousand buses and taxis electric versions in virtually overnight?" and chucked out all the old diesel spewing things. They put in all the yeah. chargers and um, just turned the place around. China gets shit done because they're 
because it's a dictatorship. <laughs> Someone decides it and it gets done. That's it. No, no going through where I'm different. Well, you see, that's of one of the beauties of an autocracy. Um, yeah. Because they go, do it. And so it gets yeah. done. I mean, they set a target of having 1.2 terawatts of wind power generation by 2030. They set that in 2022 and they've already hit it in 2024. Yeah, no, it's um, really, so, really good. Yeah, they, they get things done. Um, apparently it says here on the Driven that, um, the Driven.io, by the way, if anybody wants to check that site out, um, that Perth has bought 19, sorry, 18 electric buses. They were completed at the end of August. So that was the initial order. So we've got 18 electric buses um, now. Okay, well, that's better than nothing. Yeah, I don't know how many more they're going to go for. It doesn't really say here. They're just saying now we're retrofitting that um, Malago depot. So, um, and they had a trial at Gingerlup for Volvo electric buses. And the four buses they had there transported more than 440,000 passengers, covered more than 380,000 kilometres, saving around 350 tonnes of CO2. So I wonder what the fuel savings were there. I was going to say, they must have saved a heap of money on the cost. And and uh, maintenance as well. And maintenance, yes. Right. Uh, that's one of the big advantages of electric vehicles. Maintenance yeah. and fuel savings are huge. I know certainly for my Tesla, and I'm sure it's the same for your EVs, mm. maintenance is zero virtually, and... Um, Fuel costs for a tenth of what it would cost for a petrol. Because my car yeah. just got down at the local um, shopping centre when I was shopping this morning yes. and has um, filled up off the... Well, there wasn't much sun today, but I didn't need very much. It's been piddling Wait. down with rain. Did you get that three litres of um, massage oil that I asked you to get for the body slope? <laughs> I'm not asking you back, Gary. That's it. <laughs> That's my aim. I <laughs> know. <laughs> you know, I find you incredibly sexy, grumpy old man. <laughs> right. Okay. So you can't be grumpy too long, can you? Because like, how many times have I made you smile this this one session? Yes. <laughs> you don't yeah. break okay. it all. All right. Get yes, I am. Shut up. Because <laughs> we're actually running out of time. Because on this Zoom thing, I use the free version, which gives us. 40 minutes of recording, and I'm down to four and a half minutes. So we're going to have to be winding it up soon anyway. Um, uh, so have you got any last parting thoughts? Hello, he's he's lost his... Nah, we've lost you again. He's gone and clicked the wrong thing. So I've got a parting thought, and that is... Free charging. Like at our local shopping centre, it's free to go and charge and people abuse it. There was a guy there two days ago. He was checked in on Plugshare, good boy, for six hours. He got a BYD seal. He was plugged into the seven kilowatt um, Schneider charger and six hours. He'd stick in, um, you know, 40 odd kilowatt into his battery so he would have topped that up very nicely and there was also a model y plugged in for over four hours i mean this is just rude as far as i'm concerned so yeah. um now in well <laughs> once again if i go back to greenland and iceland in iceland there were a lot of destination charges a lot in businesses and shops and so on but you had to pay for every single one of them. I could not find a freebie. And they weren't all full and in use. So all we need to do is stick in a heap of destination charges in shopping centres, but make you pay for them. Even if it's only a nominal 20 cents per kilowatt that you shove into your car, don't yeah. care. Just make it a charge. What do you think? It's my mic. Is my mic working again? Yes, you you are you are back with us, Gary. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask: Do they have a destination charger at the penis museum that you went to in Iceland? No, <laughs> I did not see. <laughs> we that. all know. We all know why you went to Iceland. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and it was the phallological museum, okay? <laughs> oh, sorry. That's the proper word for it, right? No, no, not penis. Can't use that word penis anymore. <laughs> How big was a whale penis, anyway? Um, big. It's bigger than me. <laughs> bigger than your... Any, or you talk about your own height. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm glad you cleared that up because, you know, I was wondering, you know. <laughs> oh, well. um, okay. Final, final thoughts? Final oh, thoughts. Yeah, the charging you? thing. Charging. Char I totally agree with you. We went down to Busselton um, um, a couple of weekends ago and um, there was one Tesla guy at uh, the, some at the Busselton shopping centre at the destination charger all day. Pretty much all day he was there. Like we were thinking, please go so we can actually just you know top up before we go back to Perth. Ah, yeah, we need uh, rules, need timeouts for the destination chargers as well as obviously the fast chargers have got their um, their timeout limit. I can't remember what it's called now. We yeah, charge a dollar yeah a idle fees after five or ten minutes of a dollar a minute. Um, yeah, it something needs to be done. I'm I get a bit sick and tired of people abusing the system. Look, it's great. They're there for the people that are going to use the centre. But mm. you know, I've seen people drive up, plug in, get into their spouse's petrol car and drive off. Jeez. They get the free charge. Crazy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, look, thanks very crazy. much, Gary. We, we is about to thank get connected. <laughs> so um, thank, you. thank you very much. And... Um, Maybe I'll invite you back next week, but we won't talk about massages. <laughs> Just penises. No. <laughs> Here we go. Well, there you have it. Um, my fireside chat with Gary. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make some comments below what you thought, and um, I'll be seeing you all very soon.